जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल स्टूडेंट्स द ग्रेटेस्ट हैपीनेस ऑफ अ मैन इज टू फाइंड वंस वर्क एंड टू डिवोट वंस कंप्लीटली टूवर्ड्स इट सो फॉर यू स्टूडेंट्स ट्राई टू सीक हैपीनेस बाय एक्वायरिंग नॉलेज दैट शुड बी द अप्रोच डोंट गेट स्ट्रेस्ड और डोंट फील स्ट्रेस्ड वाइल studying or while acquiring some knowledge feel happy about your learning feel happy about grasping knowledge from any sources right so anyway uh, let's begin today's session as per promise uh, i've come with some new set of numericals based on projectile motion right so let's begin with the first question then. first question is a very very interesting one a grasshopper a grasshopper find that it can jump a maximum horizontal distance of 0.8 meter maximum horizontal distance with what speed can it travel along the road if it spends negligible time on the ground so grasshopper suppose this is the ground so it will hop like this it spends negligible time it's like this right suppose its velocity is u and this will be the range and it is given to be maximum it is given to be maximum it can jump a maximum horizontal distance of 0.8 meter so basically in the question r max is given and it is given to be 0.8 meter right now we are aware students range would be maximum for angle of projection of 45 degree so this angle must be 45 degree this is the first important point maximum range is when the angle of projection is 45 degree right so that's the first information which we have to extract after reading the question so r max what's the formula u square by g it is equal to 0.8 clear students so u square it will be equal to 0.8 multiplied by g or u is equal to square root of 0.8 multiplied by if you consider the value small u to be 10 so it would be equal to root 8 that is 2 root 2 in si meter per second so this is the velocity but in the question we are not supposed to find out the value of u actually we are supposed to find out the velocity of the grasshopper along the road this is the road of the ground so along the road the velocity would be u cos 45 degree is it clear students so the velocity of the grasshopper along the road or along the horizontal would be the component of velocity along the road that is u cos 45 degree u cos 45 degree so u we are aware it's 2 root 2 meter per second cos 45 degree it's 1 by root 2 so students the answer is 2 meter per second so the velocity of the grasshopper along the road or along the horizontal is 2 meter per second and here i have considered the value of acceleration due to gravity to be 10 meter per second square right so this was a very very interesting question so we are over with it right so maximum range is given so the angle of projection must be 45 degree and secondly after obtaining the value of u don't leave the question we need not to find the value of u actually here our motive is to find out the velocity along the road that is u cos theta is to be determined which is obtained to be 2 meter per second right okay let's discuss the second question <clears throat> second question is the velocity of a particle when it is at the greatest height is root 2 by 5 times its velocity when it is at half of its greatest height we are supposed to determine the angle of projection this is an important question so let's try to solve it first let's try to draw the relevant diagram right so this is a, this is suppose the horizontal 
This is the vertical represented by OX and OY. Suppose the angle of projection is theta. Obviously, it will follow a parabolic path like this. This is the highest point, right? This is H. And suppose this is H by 2. This distance is H by 2. So here it's written, suppose over here the velocity is, net velocity is V1. Here the net velocity is V2, right? This is suppose point A and this is point B. Now look students, point A is a point on the path of the projectile when it reaches half its maximum height. Let the net velocity at point A be V1. While point B is the highest point, right, during its motion. And here the net velocity is suppose V2. Now as per the question, it is given that the velocity of the particle when it is at the greatest height, that is V2, it is given to be root 2 by 5 times its velocity when it is at half of its greatest height. Here the net velocity is V1. This is the given information. It is given. We need to make use of this particular fact. Right? Now we need to find out the value of V1 and V2 and we need to substitute this value in this equation. And that should give us the value of theta. Right? Okay. What about V2? Now look students. If it is U, then what is the horizontal component? It is U cos theta. We are aware at any instant during the projectile motion, the horizontal component it remains constant. It won't change. Horizontal motion it covers with uniform speed, isn't it? So u cos theta component at any instant will remain constant. So v2 it is equal to u cos theta. At the highest point, the vertical component of velocity is zero. So at the highest point, the net velocity would be equal to the horizontal component of velocity which is u cos theta which will remain constant throughout. So at the highest point the net velocity is u cos theta. Put this as equation 2. Now here we need to find out vy. This is uy. It will be equal to u sin theta. And here the vertical component of velocity will get changed. So this needs to be found. And then the resultant needs to be found V1. Isn't it? So consider point A. At point A, the resultant velocity V1 it will be given by square root of Vx square plus Vy square. No doubt regarding this. Vx we are aware that is u cos theta which will throughout remain constant. Vy at point A is to be found. Right? So for this, consider motion from O to A and we have to make use of this H by 2 height as well. So let's make use of third equation of motion along vertical which is 2AS is equal to V square minus U square. So along Y component. Okay. 2AY is minus G. The projectile is initially moving in the upward direction. SY is H by 2. VY square. Here the final vertical component is VY. UY square. It will give us U sin theta. Whole square. Right students? Okay. Let's keep on solving it. Minus 2G divided by 2. H. What is the expression for the maximum height? Yes, it is u square sin square theta divided by 2g. And it will be equal to vy square minus u square sin square theta. Right, students? Okay, let's solve it. 2g, 2g get cancelled. So we are left with minus u square sin square theta divided by 2 plus u square sin square theta is equal to vy square. That is vy square. It is equal to, these are the common terms. So what do we get? 2 can be taken as LCM. 
So the numerator will have minus u square sin square theta plus 2u square sin square theta. That will give us u square sin square theta divided by 2. Right students? So this is the value of dy square. Isn't it? Now we can easily get the value of d1. So let's substitute the value of d1 and b2 in equation 1 and then keep on solving it. It should give us the result. Okay, let's try. <coughs> so students, therefore, v1, it would be equal to square root of vx square. vx would be same everywhere, that is u cos theta. So it would be u cos theta whole square plus vy square. vy square is u square sin square theta divided by 2. Right? So this is the net velocity at point A which is half of the highest point during the projectile motion of the body. Right? Okay. Now let's make use of equation of a 1 so as to solve the entire equation. Now what we need to do is, let's substitute this value of v1 over here. Therefore, from equation 1, what we get is v2. v2 is u cos theta. It is equal to root 2 by 5 v1. v1 is square root of v1 is square root of u square cos square theta plus u square sin square theta divided by 2. Right? Our main motive is to determine the value of theta which is the angle of projection. So, squaring both the sides, what do you get is u square cos square theta is equal to 2 by 5. Here we will get u square cos square theta plus u square sin square theta divided by Okay, let's rearrange the terms. Over here we get 5 u square cos square theta. Over here we get twice u square cos square theta plus 2 to get cancelled. We will be left with u square sin square theta. Right? So, this after rearranging the terms, what do we get? 3 u square cos square theta is equal to u square sin square theta which further implies that u square u square get cancelled so we get tan square theta is equal to 3 which further implies that tan theta is equal to root 3 right tan theta is equal to root 3 and we are aware tan 60 degree is equal to root 3 therefore tan theta is equal to tan 60 degree on comparing we get theta is equal to 60 degree. So students, this is the angle of projection. So if the body is projected at an angle of 60 degree with the horizontal, then the velocity of the body at the highest point is found to be root 2 by 5 times its velocity when it reaches half its maximum height. Right? So this was a very very good question. So the answer is 60 degree. That's the angle of projection. So you need to just make use of the basic facts and keep on solving it. Eventually, you will arrive at the correct result. Okay students, third question. A shell is fired from a gun from the bottom of a hill along its slope. The slope of the hill is 30 degree and the angle of the barrel to the horizontal is 60 degree. The initial velocity of the shell is given to be 21 meter per second. What we are supposed to find is the distance from the gun to the point at which the shell falls. So let's try to draw the relevant diagram first. So it is given a shell is fired from the bottom of a hill. This is point O is suppose the bottom of the hill. And the slope of the hill is 30 degree. This angle it was considered to be alpha and it is given to be 30 degree. And the angle of the barrel to the horizontal is 60 degree. This is suppose the barrel and it makes an angle of 60 degree. This is considered to be theta. It is given to be 60 degree. 
this entire angle. So this is the velocity of projection of the shell. It is given to be 21 meter per second. Obviously, it will follow a parabolic path like this. Suppose this is point A, and let us consider this to be point B. OA is the range of the projectile along the inclined plane. OB is the range of the projectile along the ground, along the horizontal, right? Here we are supposed to find out the distance from the gun to the point at which the shell falls. This is the gun and this is the point where the shell falls. So we are supposed to find out the distance OA, which is the range on the inclined plane. It is the range on the inclined plane. This is actually the range on the inclined plane. This is to be found. So students, this is the article which we have already done theoretically and we have derived each and every formula during that session, right? Here, while solving this numerical, we will be directly using the appropriate formula. So the formula for the range along the inclined plane is twice u square cos theta sine theta minus alpha divided by g cos square alpha. This is the formula for the range along the inclined plane, right? Alpha is the angle which the inclined plane makes with the horizontal. Theta is the angle of the projection with the horizontal, right? Here theta is given to be 60 degree, alpha is given to be 30 degree. So we simply need to substitute the values. So what we get is 2 u square, u is given to be 21, so 21 into 21, over here we will get cos theta is 60 degree, multiplied by sine theta is 60 and alpha is 30, 60 minus 30, it will give us 30 degree, divided by g, it can be considered to be 10, cos square alpha, that is cos alpha is 30 degree. Right? So we need to solve it. So let's substitute the value. 441, 21 square is 441 multiplied by 2. Cos 60 is half. Sine 30 is half. Divided by 10 multiplied by cos 30. It's root 3 by 2. And square of root 3 by 2 is 3 by 4. Like this. So this 4, this 4 gets eliminated. So what we are left with is divided by 10 into 3, right? Therefore, students, the range of the projectile along the inclined plane would be 882 divided by 3. Let's solve it. It will be 29, 294 divided by 10. So that will give us 29.4 meters. So this is the answer. This will be the range of the projectile along the horse, along the inclined plane. Right? So this was a question which is directly based on the application of the appropriate formula. So here we have to make use of this particular formula. Clear? So we are done with question number 3. Let's proceed to the next question. Question number 4. Let me read the question for you. The height y and the distance x along the horizontal plane of projection are given by y is given to be 80 minus 5t square in meters while x is given to be 6t in meters. t is time which is given in seconds. We are supposed to find out the initial velocity of projection. So it's an interesting question based on calculus. So the displacement of the body along y-axis is given to be 8p minus 5p square. Right? This is the displacement of the body along y-axis. So what will be the velocity of the body along y-axis? It will be given by differentiation of y with respect to t. We are aware so that the displacement is given. Then by differentiating displacement with respect to time, we can determine the instantaneous velocity of the body along that direction, right? 
So V y is the velocity along the y direction, along the y coordinate. So what differentiating we get, it will be 8 minus 10 p. So therefore, V y, we are supposed to find out the initial velocity. Initial means at t equals to 0. So V y at t equals to 0, it will be equal to 8 minus 10 into 0. So it will be 8 meter per second. Put this as equation number 1. Right? Let's proceed similarly with the y x coordinate. So the x coordinate is given to be x coordinate is given to be 6 t. Therefore, the velocity of the body along the x coordinate will be equal to dx by dt, differentiation of x with respect to time, and it will give us 6. So therefore, vx at time t equals 0. Obviously, it is independent of time. Therefore, it is constant. So, it will remain 6 only. 6 meter per second. Now, Vx and Vy. These are the two perpendicular components of the velocity of the body. So, the resultant velocity initially would be given by square root of Vx square plus Vy square. So, that will give us Vx square, that is 6 square plus Vy, its magnitude is 8. So, it is 8 square. So, it will be square root of 36 plus 64. So, it is square root of 100 or the resultant initial velocity t equals to 0 means we are considering the initial velocity. It would be 10 meter per second. So students, this was the question which was based on calculus. The displacement of the body along x and y coordinate are given. So by differentiating it with respect to time, we can get the velocity along x and y direction. And since the two velocities, v x, v y are rectangular components, the angle to them is 90 degree. Therefore, resultant, its magnitude is given by square root of v x square plus v y square. Substitute the value of v x and v y and we have obtained the answer to be 10 meter per second. So we are over with question number 4 as well. Now question number 5. Uh, this is a very very important question actually. A particle, question number 5, a particle is projected over a triangle from one end of a horizontal base and grazing the vertex falls on the other end of the base. If alpha and beta are the base angles and theta is the angle of projection, then we are supposed to prove that tan theta is equal to tan alpha plus tan beta. Okay, this is an interesting question. So what we are supposed to prove is to prove tan theta is equal to tan alpha plus tan beta. Now again, we need to draw the diagram. Without drawing the appropriate diagram, such numericals can't be solved. Okay? Right? So you need to represent diagrammatically. So this is the question basically. This is suppose the horizontal axis and OY denotes the vertical axis. Suppose a body is projected with velocity u and it will follow a parabolic path like this. Let us consider this to be a point which can be considered to be the vertex. A particle is projected over a triangle, so we need to make a triangle. So construct this triangle. Okay, now let's read the question. Again, a particle is projected over a triangle. OAB is a triangle. So a particle is projected over a triangle such that it grazes the vertex. A is the vertex. And OB is the base. Base angles are given to be alpha and beta. This is given to be alpha and this angle is given to be beta. This is the given situation. And this angle, the angle of projection, this entire angle, it is given to be theta. Theta is the angle of projection. So we are supposed to prove that tan theta is equal to tan alpha plus tan beta. So students, what you do is drop a perpendicular from here. Let us represent it by y. And as we are aware, OB will be the range, it is the horizontal distance covered by the projectile in the time during which it remains in air or space. 
So if you consider this to be x, then this remaining distance would be r minus x. Place friends, so this is the diagram. Now what to do is, let's consider uh, tan alpha plus tan beta. Let's consider right hand side. RHS. It is tan alpha plus tan beta. So these are two right angled triangles. So we can substitute the value of alpha beta in terms of y and x. So tan alpha, let's consider this right angled triangle. It's perpendicular by base. So tan alpha is y by x. Tan beta, consider this smaller right angled triangle. Again, perpendicular by base. It would be y divided by r minus x. So if you consider LCM, x into r minus x, it will be y, r minus x plus xy. So if you solve it and open the bracket, y r minus xy plus xy will get cancelled. So we will be left with r y divided by x into r minus x. So put this as equation number 1. So this is RHS, right? Tan alpha plus tan beta is equal to R y divided by x into R minus x. R is the range, range of the projectile, which is equal to u square sine 2 theta by g, which in turn may be written as 2 u square sine theta cos theta by g. Sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta cos theta. Right? So, this is RHS. Now, let's consider left hand side. We need to get the value of tan theta. For that students, let's consider the equation of trajectory. This is case 2. When a body is projected with velocity u at an angle theta with the horizontal. So, we have discuss the equation of trajectory in that case. The equation of trajectory is y is equal to x tan theta minus half g x square divided by u square cos square theta. So let's make use of that equation over here. So the equation of trajectory is y equals to I am writing the equation of trajectory. So it is y equals to x tan theta minus half g divided by u square cos square theta into x. This is the formula, isn't it? Now what to do is, let's take tan theta as common. Let's consider tan theta or rather tan theta, if you consider it to be common, what we get? x minus g by 2 u square cos square theta. It is actually x square. So, it is x square and tan theta has been taken as common. So, over here we will write tan theta. Tan theta students, you are aware, it is equal to sin theta divided by cos theta. So let's keep on evaluating this. Okay. I'm writing this equation over here. Why it is equal to tan theta. Right? X minus g x square divided by 2 u square cos square theta tan theta. This tan theta it may be represented as sin theta divided by cos theta. This cos theta and one cos theta, it will get cancelled. So, we will be left with y is equal to tan theta x minus g x square divided by 2 u square cos theta sin theta. Cos theta sin theta. Right? Now look, over here, 2 u square sin theta cos theta divided by g, that is equal to range. So this further can be written in this particular manner. 
x minus x square 2 u square cos theta sin theta by g that is equal to r ok so x can also be actually taken as common so we get 1 minus x by r or it is equal to x tan theta r minus x divided by r now try to rearrange let's obtain the value of tan theta left hand side is tan theta therefore tan theta students it would be equal to y multiplied by r divided by r minus x and 1 by x on rearranging it can be written as r y divided by x into r minus x put this as equation number 2 now consider these two equations this is tan theta and this is right hand side which is tan alpha plus tan beta it is also equal to r y divided by x into r minus x from 1 and 2 it's pretty clear that the expression in the right hand side are exactly same therefore we conclude that from 1 and 2 we conclude that left hand side which is tan theta it must be equal to right hand side that is tan alpha plus tan beta so this is the mathematical verification of this particular statement right so students i hope you have enjoyed doing these questions and you have understood the concepts involved in each and every question right so these are some selected and very important questions related to projectile motion or rather motion in a plane so i hope you will keep trying more and more such questions so that's it for this particular session do join me in my next lecture thank you